In a previous video, we discussed that termination is your last resort. It should never be the first thing you reach for. In this video, we're going to discuss the four scenarios that you are going to look for when it's time to terminate. It's going to be these four scenarios and no others. Everything else is development, but with these four, that's when it's time to terminate. We're going to show you how to handle that, how to execute on those four items when the situations do arise and how it can save your budget and how it can save your company culture and your morale by following these guidelines and terminating when it's necessary to terminate. Here we go with number one, character issues. If you have someone lying, cheating, or stealing, and you allow them a second chance in this circumstance, you are failing your team. You cannot keep someone around who has a flawed character of deceit. You cannot. You can't fix that. There is no development to help someone grow out of that. There is but it's not in the scenario of an employment situation where you need to work with them and other people. You need someone that you can trust now. If you can't trust them on the fly, if you can't trust them when things are hot and heavy on a Friday night, if you can't trust them on a Monday morning, if you can't trust them on a Saturday afternoon when, when the staff is down and no one's around to keep an eye on them, when can you trust them? One of the markers of someone you can trust is what do they do when you're not around? What do they do when you're not looking? This is very much like parents and kids. But in employment situations, you have to have no mercy on a liar, a cheat, or a thief. I'm not saying you go and abuse them, but also to put a sharp, clear, decisive end to that relationship when necessary. Number two, harassment or abuse of any kind. This, besides being against the law, you cannot tolerate this kind of person in your life let alone your business. If you have a person exhibiting these types of behaviors, these types of patterns, you need to eliminate them immediately. Number three, refusal to be a team player. This one gets me. It doesn't get me as bad as the unethical and the illegal stuff, but this one is bad. This is the person who just is difficult to get along with. They're resistant towards your direction. They don't like to cooperate with their fellow peers. They don't pull their weight necessarily. Or if they do, they won't do anything extra. This is the person who uses phrases like, that's not my job. Or they told you to do it. Or they told her to do it. This is a person, when you give them a deadline for a project, they don't deliver. They don't communicate effectively. Maybe they're emotional. Maybe they react too much. Maybe they're rude with staff or customers. The worst. This is the worst. This kind of person makes the whole environment tense and it destroys your morale over time. Because if you're tolerating that, everybody else sees that you're tolerating that and it's going to turn on you really fast. You might end up having a mutiny on your hands at some point. Also, do you have vendors or suppliers in your in your chain that are like this because they might be maybe the sales rep who who in the, their right mind would be a neglectful sales rep or rude to people but there are they they are out there these people exist if they're in your life they give you hassle they make you jump through their hoops you need to look for somebody else you need to reassess these bad arrangements these are bad deals we're always looking to to upgrade our cell phone plan or shop around our insurance plans we should be if you're not doing that that's a free life lesson there. But outside of that, how often are we really reassessing bad deals in relationships in our life? And if you're a manager or a leader at your work, it's not just interpersonal relationships like a spouse or a life partner, or boyfriend, girlfriend. It's not that. If you're, you should be reassessing those too. But at work, you need to constantly be reassessing. 80% of your income, 80% of your revenue comes in from about 20% of your people. 20% of your customers produce 80% of the revenue. This is the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. The numbers don't work out perfectly, but they're a pretty good guideline. And I'm telling you right now, what I recommend to people all the time is that yearly, on an annual basis, that you're going through and you're reassessing for who the bottom 10 to 20% of your staff is, and you have a plan to replace them. That means you're doing reviews, your monthly reviews, your quarterly reviews, your employee evaluations, whatever it is, however you measure, however you score. And at the end of the year, you do your company planning with your team, your inner circle, and these are the people that you're looking to replace. You got to have a plan in place to do that. That's why it helps to have a stack of applications, people that you've interviewed for a time to come later, even if it's not time right now to hire them. You'll be ready for when it's time to terminate with these four scenarios. Let's go to the next one. 
Number four, this one can be a toughie. This is the good hearted person who can't get their act together. This one's tough because we feel for them. They fail to be able to put together the pieces from our development video when we work at nurturing them and developing them because that's the main job of a leader is to develop your people. It's not to boss them around or micromanage them. Your main job as a leader is to develop your people. If you develop them into what they need to become, everybody wins. And sometimes we have the good hearted person who just can't seem to get their act together. Maybe you tell them to take a shower or to watch their hygiene and they don't do that. And they can't seem to realize that that's important as an adult living and working in America. That's a big deal here. It's not always a big deal everywhere, but it's a big deal here. And some people, maybe they don't get it. We dealt with some of that in the army, but this is the person the phrase bless their heart was invented for. Okay. Bless their heart. They're not going to get it. You've tried and tried and tried, and maybe they can, if you had longer, maybe another five or 10 years of poking your eyes out with a pencil in frustration. But as of right now, you have a team to lead and a budget to meet or exceed. And you have a company to grow successfully for the sake of your job and for the sake of your team's job. And if you keep these people around, it's going to work against you. Your employee, employee, your employee evaluations. You cannot tell. You cannot tolerate this kind of person in your life.